Okay, well, I, I suppose uh, that many I, I saw many faces <laughs> I, I knew, so that's very good. This is um, again a presentation about lithium batteries. Okay, some parts are are, are exactly the same as uh, as last year. Okay, but I want to highlight what are the the improvements uh, we have performed this year and the the latest news. Okay, so. Um, just to, to remind you for rechargeable lithium battery location, okay, it's just a reminder where uh, where are located, okay, to keep this in mind. Okay, same for, for non-rechargeable. Okay, we have many many applications for ELTs, copy voice recorder, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, okay. There are um, as as we, we talked last year, there are some <laughs> controversial situation for uh, because of this new rule for the underweighted locator device. Okay, from uh, from 90 days instead of 30. Okay, there are uh, it, it leads to to many many changes from other technologies to lithium batteries, and uh, and it's important to have a clear view how it should be treated. Okay. The the main concern of lithium batteries the thermal runaway. Okay, as I explained last year, I think it has no sense to enter in, in chemical details, but I I wanted to keep this slide for for completeness. Okay, this is again thermal runaway. Okay, last last year I I saw a video as many of you were there. The, you have the link. You will have available and you can find many in internet. Okay, to uh, to provide you an an idea what uh, which are the concern when we install a lithium battery in one aircraft. Why all this uh, all this work has to be performed from qualification, new rulemaking, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, but I I will not repeat. Okay. The, um, we have received some uh, some uh, some applications, okay. And when we discuss with you, I think the my feeling for this year is that uh, uh, people is more aware and and ha is more focused on the needs, okay, to cope with a lithium battery installation in one aircraft, okay. But uh, but still, we we face some situations where. Um, where uh, we receive an application and and the the applicant comes to us and say, hey, my battery is qualified, okay, but this is not enough. We should understand what is behind the, this qualification, okay. This is this is an example, okay, for uh, for uh, the test of short circuit test of, of a single cell, okay. And as you can see, there are many many uh, materials that that don't cover, okay. This uh, this situation. So, for example, uh, the old DO311 is not covered in this. Okay, this is just a small example. Okay, this situation is repeated in the. Uh, we have a complete list. Okay, on on this, and and you cannot imagine how many red crosses we have. Okay, so this is why this is why it it leads to. Uh, uh, to industry and, and authorities to work together, okay, to develop new materials, okay, in order to cover all the all the all the risk, okay. Uh, the origin of uh, lithium battery was uh, already studied, okay, and there are since uh, it's not new. Uh, this is a this is a message I, I wanted to pass to you because it's it's not uh, it's not new. There are material addressing lithium batteries. That date from more than 20 years, okay. But um, but uh, it was it was detected that it was not enough, and the the origin of uh, discovered this were some incidents on on rechargeable lithium batteries. Okay, I, I presented last year, so I I'm not going to enter into details. It's, it will be available in the presentation for you. Okay, so the uh, in in a very short period of time we have. Um, uh, some uh, fire situations for rechargeable lithium batteries. Okay, again for rechargeable lithium batteries in 787 in the main battery. Okay, you can see the the result, and and the same for non-rechargeable lithium battery. Okay, for a fixed ELT. Okay, we have a we have a problem in in uh, in less than one year. So it uh, it become mandatory to to develop further uh, further material. Okay, you, you can see the, the the upper part of the of the fuselage. Okay, this is one single ELT who created that. Okay, uh, luckily it was on ground. Okay, so uh, yeah, it was detected that the regulation was not addressing all lithium hazards. Okay, so last year um, 
I presented the step one uh, as uh, the step uh, already covered. Okay, so the, the, the new special conditions were were rise. Okay, and and it was made available. But the the step two was uh, was not already was not already covered. Okay, just the the wish to have um, a, a new guidance material. Okay, that that today luckily it's available. Okay, for uh, for rechargeable lithium battery it was published in December last year, and for non rechargeable lithium battery in September. Okay, it's uh, these two working groups uh, covered by RTCA. There is no is Eurokai was not in the loop. Okay, so don't don't look for an equivalent material. So uh, we have to work with uh, RTCA RTCA material. Okay, but it was more more than two years of work of, of several people in each group. Okay, and I, I I think the results were were quite good. I hope it will last for for years. <laughs> okay, and the step three, uh, it's covered partially now because the the TSO from FAA is already published. Okay, it's available in March uh, 2018. Okay, for rechargeable and for non rechargeable. Okay, ETSO will will come next year in the next exercise of uh, of publication of of this kind of material. So uh, we have already uh, on, uh, started to work on that. Okay, and uh, and I, as I presented last year, the the long term solution will be the to have um, because many energy new energy devices are are coming on on board. Okay, and. In the past, uh, for example, in the 1353, we have uh, some subparagraphs addressing nickel cadmium technology. Okay, we consider that it has no sense to cover every single technology in the regulation itself. Okay, so the intention is to to have a 1353 generic. Okay, and include uh, every new technology that is coming. Okay, in the in the AMC. Okay, this this will uh, this will make. Uh, uh, it has to react faster, okay, and, and adapt to the new technologies coming coming on board, okay. So this is the the long term solution. I, I think this uh, this concept is not only applicable for for this um, for 1353, okay. The, I think it's becoming the more and more generic for CS25, CS25, okay. So you you will you will see this kind of, of philosophy in in other in other situations. Okay? So. Focusing uh, rechargeable lithium battery, okay, the special condition were uh, uh, sent to public consultation in 2006. Okay, um, sorry, but they are not available uh, in the, the ASA website still because uh, they were <laughs> published in so long time ago. Okay, but uh, I hope it will come. Okay, and uh, um, yeah, the ASA today implement the special condition through through a, through a rechargeable lithium battery CRI specific. Okay, the means of compliance the, that um, we have to face from now on, okay, uh, that EASA proposed, okay, this has means of compliance, is the DO311 plus, plus risk assessment at aircraft level, okay. Uh, you will say in the past, um, only DO311 was proposed as means of compliance, okay, but um, it was focusing on the main batteries, but now we intend to cover every single uh, rechargeable lithium battery that is installed in the aircraft, okay? This is why the risk assessment at aircraft level in some in cases, in some installation, it will become very, very, very little work, okay? It depends, it depends on the installation. But I prefer to keep this risk assessment at aircraft level for your awareness and to keep in mind that, uh, that qualifications is not enough, okay? So this is uh, this is applicable for uh, aircraft types for all, okay, 23, 25, 27, and 29, okay. But today there is a um, kind of a, of agreement in internal in EASA that for CS23 and 27 it only applies to uh, to main batteries, okay, because uh, we were waiting to have the the final material, okay, and now we have to take a decision. Uh, because, uh, for example, there are some CS23 aircraft that are very complex. You know, and and uh, and the risk is higher. So so we are we are studying the further applicability, okay, to other to other kind of battery for CS23 and 27. This is an internal discussion, okay. So uh, and but the the base of our discussion is to keep in a risk-based approach, okay. For uh, just for information, for CS22, VLA, CLA, okay, this was published in January 2016 and it's available in the in the in the ASA website. 
So, uh, re regarding ETSO, okay, uh, we have C179B, okay, it will come, as I, I said before, okay, the, it will come in 2019, okay, the FA has already published, uh, and, and this ETSO will call to DO 311A, okay. Um, I have just a comment, because uh, DO 311A, I don't know if you are familiar, or I, I recommend you to, to uh, have this as soon as possible. Okay, because there is uh, uh, there was a controversial issue on uh, there is an appendix C, okay, that um, that provides you a, an alternative uh, solution to comp uh, to comply with the thermal runaway te containment test. Okay, this at ETSO level and at well, at TSO level is not accepted from FAA. Okay, to cope with the TSO, um, ETSO we have the intention to. To, uh, to follow, uh, to get harmonized with FAA, okay? So no, not accept at ETSO level, but on EASA, on EASA world, okay, we are, we are under discussion because we consider it could be possible to install a battery in one aircraft uh, using this appendix C, okay? I just passed you this message to keep, uh, to, uh, for your awareness, okay? But I, I think it's not needed to go, to go further, okay? So the, um, the message is the, the new ETS application will be requested to comply with this DO 311A, okay? And the new installations will be requested to comply with the special conditions, okay? At the end, what, uh, what uh, EASA is targeting is not the, the uh, qualification, okay? We, uh, we work with aircrafts, okay? So the installation part is the, the main part, okay? And, and this is why we request these special conditions. For non-rechargeable lithium battery, they were published a little bit later, okay, in September 2016. And it's available in the ASA website. And, uh, and uh, currently, we, we ask for this only for CS25 and 29 products, okay? We are working in the, in parallel to the rechargeable lithium battery, we are working with CS23, 27 applicability, okay? It's under discussion. Uh, we, are, we are trying to uh, get, uh, to work together with FAA, okay? And, if it is possible to get harmonized or as much harmonized as possible, okay, in order to make your, your life easy, <laughs> okay, but uh, the working is, is still ongoing and again, it's a risk-based approach, okay. So this is, I, I wanted to present which were the, the previous means of compliance, okay, in the past, we, uh, there were no, no um, it was missing a more appropriate standard, okay, so we proposed the ETSO C142A plus a risk assessment at aircraft level, okay, this is what is, was written in the, in the CRI, okay, in the past, you will see what is, what is coming, coming, okay, and FAA in the past has created an issue paper, okay, and they, they call for TSO 142A, that is the old one, and DO 347, okay. This is um, this is uh, this was proposed by FAA in the absence of uh, any more mature material. They proposed this. Okay. Uh, today they are, they are uh, not proposing this. They are proposing the, the new material. Okay. So uh, what we are we are proposing as MISO compliant today for non rechargeable is um, in the absence of ETSO 142B. Okay, we that will call to DO 227A. We call directly to DO 227A. Okay, plus a risk assessment at aircraft level, and you will say, okay, we are in the same situation. We have new material, but we are in the same situation. But uh, the good thing is that the risk assessment, as the qualification levels, you know, are more stringent. Okay, the the risk assessment at aircraft level is, uh, let's say, alleviated. Okay. So uh, if, it, if you have, if you install batteries, the O227A, you know, the risk assessment will be easier for you, okay? So, um, of course, uh, these are the means of compliance proposed. Uh, alternative means of compliance can be proposed and, and can be managed uh, with EASA in a case-by-case -case basis, okay? So, but uh, as, as I said last year, the, the important thing is to, uh, at the end, we, we need to cover the function and the installation, okay, and, and we have covered the delta. So uh, if the qualification is better, the delta is lower. So it's simple, okay? But don't forget that the uh, internal failures can happen, okay, because uh, sometimes um, uh, this is not taken into account, but uh, it's a reality, okay? If a failure in, 
uh, a small failure in manufacturing can create a, a fire, okay? And, and the important thing when, when we, we chat together about this topic is that uh, to understand, we, we, you, you need to make us understand clearly that it's clear for both parts that the, the impact on the, on the rest of the aircraft, on the crew and, and the passengers. Okay, so we have to work together on, on, this, uh, on this understanding. Okay? So, um, this, uh, as I said before, ETSO in 2019, TSO already published. Okay? New ETSO application um, will be requested to comply with the, the 227A. Okay? And there is one, is, uh, one point that is specific for non-rechargeable, okay? that is trying to, um, to simplify um, the, um, the case of these, um, these small batteries that are typically used um, in, the, in the avionics okay? um, as backup, uh, backup batteries okay? and are between two and five watt hour. Okay? Uh, for this, these batteries, there is a, in the, a TSO level, okay? there is a, a Dash 7 approval okay? that is specific. Okay, and it's um, it's focused on end item level. Okay, the the particularity of, of this uh, of this TSO dash seven is that it is linked with the product. Okay, so when when you have an TSO dash seven, it's is uh, you you cannot use this uh, TSO to to install a battery in an in another equipment. Okay. And, and for example, the set of, of tests is alleviated because you don't need to, to test at cell level and at battery level. Okay, so an item level test, okay, taking into account the amount of energy included in these batteries, okay, that are one of the smaller in the in the market, is considered is considered safe. Okay, just for your for your knowledge, because we received some complaints, okay, for about some batteries 2.1 2.1 watt hour. Okay, we need to. Uh, to perform a, a set of tests that uh, is quite quite big, so uh, there was an an agreement on the on this material, and this is the result. Okay, and, and just for, for finalizing the, the new installation at the end uh, will be requested to comply with the with the special conditions. Okay, that is the, the target to be fulfilled. So this is uh, for very small batteries treatment. This has not changed from from last year. Okay, batteries under two watt hour. Uh, uh, are requested to have at least okay this minimal qualification okay and it's it's considered is considered inherently safe just a difference because FAA may make applicable to the issue, the issue paper they make applicable to all batteries okay in EASA we we consider the CRI is not needed okay if it is uh, if it is describing the certification plan Okay, if in your certification plan you describe I have a battery 1.7 watt hour uh, qualified UL1642, I, we don't need to raise the CRI, okay? Because sometimes the CRI is a special condition, okay? So it can lead to a major change and so on. So we prefer to keep it uh, keep it simple, okay? I think that's all. I have just just only want to, to pass a message because we have been discussing with some national authorities because um, uh, we we know that uh, some, especially with the uh, ULD okay and, and copyable recorder and and these installations, we know uh, that uh, some companies are managing this by a minor change, okay. So um, we try to um, EASA is doing a big effort uh, to uh, to try to get harmonized. As per today, if a CRI special condition is applicable to a, to a project, it means it's a major change. Okay, so uh, so please just take this into account. Okay, we 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 publish the STC newsletter. Okay, the, the first uh, the first issue, and we we address the non-rechargeable lithium battery. Okay, we are presenting this to NAAs. We are presenting this in STC workshops. We are presenting this in in all the forum. Uh, we we can okay in order to uh, to spread the information and and to uh, to have an equal treatment to to all of you okay so i think this is all from my part you have any any question there are indeed some questions uh interestingly there are a couple of questions which are um uh, addressing the same issue, um, is there any uh, regulation or policy from EASA for 
uh, non-installed devices, so portable IFE, portable devices with lithium battery installed, and not meaning the small ones, but uh, bigger batteries. Yeah, this, uh, so th these borders are, <laughs> we, we receive some, uh, sometimes this, this kind of questions. There are some specific people in EASA um, working with uh, dangerous goods, okay, and they are the, they are for non-installed lithium batteries, okay, they are the, the adequate people, okay, to, to uh, treat these topics, okay? Huh? Ah, yeah, yeah, air, air operation, okay? So um, so um, it's clear that uh, with all this presentation, what we are covering, okay, is the install lithium batteries. Okay. We, we may take this uh, point and uh, um, address this uh, through uh, our air operation colleagues and come back with a reply to your queries. Yes. Actually, there is uh, some kind of guideline uh, in terms of bringing PEDs on board, like laptops, because in the end, it's a cabin crew who has to deal with any occasions uh, when you have fire. Uh, what we have is a guideline that you we accept that one uh, laptop might be burning, because that is something cabin crew can still handle, but we are not accepting um, charging stations where you staple them on top of each other, where you have one laptop uh, setting all the others on fire, because you might end up with a fire which you can't handle anymore. So if you plan to install anything where you are charging um, devices like iPads or laptops, um, come to us because there's a special condition on that because you have to separate them in order to prevent them from um, setting each other on fire. That's what we have already today. Okay, thank you. In any case, I would uh, suggest to, to go with the coordinated uh, answer, you know, so that may reflect what we have in certification and what uh, they have also in uh, standardization, okay? So perhaps another question, uh, which is uh, coming from different questions uh, going the same way. Um, is any battery relocation or installation automatically making the change major, or is there a possibility to have the, the change classified minor? So what is clear, if, um, if it is not in the TCDS and a create special condition uh, should be rise, okay, it's clear it's major, okay. We are, we are in parallel uh, working with the, um, with the TC holders Okay, trying to introduce um, uh, these CRIs. N normally, you, you cannot introduce a CRI special condition without any without any installation that uh, that launch it. Okay, but we are we are trying to manage this with the TC holder in order to install the the create special condition to install. No, sorry, <laughs> in order to to include the, this special condition in the in the TCDS. Okay. So once it will be included in the TCDS, the minor or major classification, I think, uh, um, yeah, I'm, not a <laughs> I'm not an expert on that. So uh, we, maybe we need to talk with the, um, with the chief PCM. We can take note on that. Okay. Yes, yes, for sure. We will uh, uh, review all the queries that we are collecting in Slido because it's important uh, to make a feedback, you yeah. know, that uh, is uh, discussed also internally. So, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, th this is a point, it's, it's, uh, I, I, it's already on the table and we are discussing with the, um, with the chief PCMs that is uh, in charge of this topic. So we, we will come back to you with a, with a more clear answer. But what is clear, if it is not in the TCDS and, and you have to raise a special condition, it, it becomes major directly, okay? In fact, I think we are really in the middle of the process, you know, to define, you know, the, I would say the practice, you know, as far as concerned these aspects. So uh, it's fundamental for us to uh, analyze the debate internally, you know, and provide uh, uh, the best feedback to all of you uh, in a formal way. Okay, and this, this is what I'm expecting actually from all these queries, you know, from Slido to really have a collective uh, reply and keep bridging, you know, between uh, EASA and, and the uh, industries. Um, perhaps one last question, Carla, yes? Yes. Uh, from Mr. Franz Redak. Are you okay with that? 
uh, perhaps a more detailed question of, than the previous one. Um, in the non-rechargeable battery special condition, it is not explicitly written that it's uh, making it applicable to those batteries qualified with ETS or C142. So is there a, a, a reason for that? Or is it the right understanding that those batteries are, uh, ha are in the, the scope of this uh, special condition? Uh, that, uh, in fact, today uh, is, is not, uh, as, as I said, um, we are calling to the O2278 directly because ETSO is not yet published. Okay, so probably in the when it will be published, we have to update the, mean, the means of compliance. Say ETSO 142B plus risk assessment at the graph level. Okay, so. Uh, we, uh, we could mention FAA material, but it's not, a <laughs> it's not our material, okay? So we prefer to, to call directly to the, to the DO227A, okay? Uh, just, uh, just a moment, can you please bring a microphone to Mr. Redak, because otherwise uh, other participants cannot hear. Them. Thank you. Uh, I raised this question because uh, for me it's uh, the part 21 uh, side, which is of interest, because we are in the position to classify major or minor. Um, now, uh, I've been told that I have to raise uh, the major because of this special condition. If I read the special condition, I don't see that it is applicable to an ETSO part, which I think is approved by definition. No. Sorry. Well, that's that's your interpretation, yes. But uh, the point is, uh, it's an ETSO part, isn't it? Yes. Not yet, because ETSO doesn't exist, but it will be. It's, okay. it's approved but to yeah, 142. ETSO, ETSO doesn't mean you can install whatever. That's no? true. You but the, the additional qualification for the battery, I, I agree that uh, the installation part of it might be, uh, have to be addressed by the installer. But uh, the additional request to uh, provide uh, substantiation on the battery test itself, um, if, if I read an, uh, that an equipment is ETSO and the ETSO is not removed from the list uh, because it's being void because of that special condition, mm -hmm. I assume that the equipment itself is approved and I just cover the installation part of yeah, it. I'll give you a simple example. For example, uh, a lithium battery can uh, can have a venting provision, okay, and the, the test can allow to vent by the venting provision, okay. So the, the gases the, the gases coming out could be toxic, okay. So if if uh, the the volume of the place it's installed is very small, you know, and there is a person there, you can have problems. So we need to understand this part. So this is why I said that the qualifications are improving. Okay, so the delta between qualification and installation, okay, it's becoming less and less. Uh, it's easier for you. Okay, so but you cannot say, I have a ETSO material I install. I I I, I close my eyes, and that's all. We're not closing our eyes. Okay, uh, but uh, the point is, it's not very clear. Uh, that's uh, and that I want to repeat that. Uh, it's not very clear what uh, an applicant should do if he has an ETSO part in front of him. Uh, where you, with a special condition, require this specific ETSO part to reclassify it to a certain DO standard, uh, which is not identified as part of the ETSO approval. Uh, now, uh, I agree that might be necessary at a certain given time, but uh, wouldn't it be then better just to remove the ETSO uh, authorization and say, this is void, you cannot install it with ETSO 142. You have to have another one. And that is not identified in the special condition either. It does not say if you have an ETSO 142 uh, battery, mm -hmm. it's not acceptable unless you have you, you're done this uh, whatever DO uh, testing on top of it. Mm. Yeah, but you, you will see that in the, in the future, uh, ETSO 142B okay, will call to the test requested today in the DO 227A, there will be a link, okay? So, so we but will not ask e extra test. DOAs are approving major and minor now, not in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. That's but, my question. No, no. But, but what we are approving today, okay, we are accepting today is that the, the, the old 
ETSO plus a risk assessment at aircraft level. This has been accepted till now, okay? And we understand there is a transitory period, okay? But what I recommend you is that to, uh, to install the new guidance material, okay, uh, batteries that complies with the new guidance material. It will make uh, easier life for, for all parts, okay? If you want to, to propose another means of compliance, you are allowed. Okay, but we have to discuss in a case by case basis. So this is the, the, the message I want to pass. Okay. okay so thank you very much. Uh, we won't uh, take thank another question. Thank you very question. much, uh, Fernando. <laughs> yeah, thank you.